for more on the news in the markets, let's welcome in David Strzeski, CEO of Sound Planning Financial. David, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for being here. So, David, I was taking a look at your notes, and this line really stood out. I can't think of a single reason to be bullish in the short term right now. What's the short term, first of all? And give me the reasons why you're so bearish. Okay, well, we do have to look at the world in, in different time frames. So uh, short term is going to be maybe like over the, you know, the remainder of the year here. Um, but uh, even to the midterm right now, uh, there is just a lot of data that's coming out today that is just very bearish. And I mean, we're, we're looking at the most anticipated recession right now in, in our history. So, you know, the, the, the longest bull market just ended. OK, so the bigger they are, the harder they fall. We all know the term doesn't always have to work out like that. But we have a lot that has caused a very frothy market. We've, we've, we've seen stock markets rise, bond markets rise, crypto markets rise, housing market rise as a result of the credit situation. Uh, but uh, of course, you know, the Fed now has, you know, flipped the entire uh, system here with the fastest raises that we've had in recorded history. You know, but yields are still rising right now, even though they just paused. Uh, this isn't making sense exactly. And we're also seeing a new trend develop today uh, that since June, we've seen about 26% increase right now on the CPI. That's a trend. Um, you know, and again, we're still above 4% on the, uh, the PCE, the more important one there. We're looking at gas prices right now as the Saudis and the Russians have, have joined together in this whole BRICS concept. And they're looking at dumping or doing 150, uh, 1.5 million barrels less daily. Uh, that is very concerning given the fact that low cost energy is going to be really important if we're going to keep trucking solid, if we're going to continue to build, if we're going to continue to, to function as an economy right now. Uh, you know, consumers are getting squeezed, right, with these, these credit cards, car leases, mortgages, insurance that they have to pay with higher rates. We're looking at $1 trillion right now in credit card debt and, uh, you know, APR is 25 to 35%. Uh, people are putting groceries on their credit cards. So, with last week being 33 trillion in, in debt, Janet Yellen telling us that we need another 1.9 to finish the year. That's the equivalent of 10.4 billion in new treasuries issued every day just to keep this thing floating. That just doesn't sell, spell a, a robust recovery to me. And so I think here in the short term, uh, we are definitely going to be seeing more volatility, especially as we've just been led by about seven stocks this year. And they're certainly under pressure right now. Well, we were starting to see a broadening out. And if you take a look, the Dow now down about 4% in September, NASDAQ down 6.7%, S&P down about almost 6%. So I guess how much more weakness do we need to see to start pricing some of these things in? And what does pricing in a recession, the most anticipated recession, as you point out, but also the, the one that hasn't come yet, uh, what does that pricing that in look like? Okay, well, let me just note, there's three things none of us know about cycles. When things fall apart, how far they drop, how long they stay down for. And so, you know, who knows the when? What are some of the things that we need to see? Well, obviously, we're, we're, we're seeing a trend develop right now in, in the CPI, which is a very big negative. Uh, obviously, we're looking at... Uh, uh, unemployment numbers today, but just understand something about those unemployment numbers that aren't exactly the same as pre-2020, and that is that we had the great resignation. There's so many people today who are over the age of 65, there's 10,000 boomers every single day that hit, are hitting retirement age, and they've just now transitioned into retirement. So I think that we have some kind of skewed unemployment numbers today, just given the fact that, you know, it was only just last September that we got back to uh, the same levels of employment as we had prior to COVID. So we're not just seeing some massive expansion. I don't see a whole bunch of organizations today creating jobs. It's easy to accept a job, way more difficult to create a job. So CapEx is, is down a ton right now. And again, we're going to see more of that uh, continue on because of the cost of capital. You know, the whole world has been set up on cheap money, but especially the United States. And uh, and, and as we're looking at this, the, the, the cost of capital right now, and we got one point five trillion in corporate debt coming due next year. Well, where are they going to get the, the, the funds? And, uh, you know, I was just listening to an interview uh, done by a guy who owns a couple of small and mid cap companies. And he was saying that uh, two thirds of his profit now have just gone to uh, the new credit costs because they had to re-metabolize buildings and they had to get, uh, you know, had to do some more borrowing here in order to be positioned for the future. But that's two thirds of the profit. So I expect 
that we're going to see margin compression, uh, which of course is the profitability, and that ultimately that leads to whether companies will pay dividends or not. And so dividends are not guaranteed, so please just remember that. Um, but, uh, but the other part to this as well, to, to note, and I'm sorry that this is a, a kind of a negative statement, is that bonds can lose money in five different ways. And I believe that all five of those ways that bonds lose money are literally on the table right now. You know, we're seeing the 10 year treasury get up to four and a half right now. That's the inverse relationship that the value of our bonds have to the way that the market moves with interest rates. And, and that's, of course, the big issue that, uh, that we've been seeing in the banks. Uh, we're looking at net present value changes. You know, and that's ultimately comes down to what is our personal CPI? Uh, the number that CPI gives us is not actually a personal figure that we can relate to because here is what we spent pre-2020, here's what we now spend today. It's a, 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 a combination of factors that the Fed puts together uh, in order to tell a story. But what we have seen, at least from a personal practice side, is that our clients are probably experiencing more like 10% inflation, or they certainly have been experiencing more like 10% inflation. Um, but the average American today is seeing a lot higher of a percentage, just given the fact that energy prices are so high. You know, JP Morgan yesterday said, hey, we're going to get to $150 a barrel. I mean, I've been saying this for a while. I think that, you know, we're, we're, we're probably going to be seeing some of this as more people are beginning to recognize some of these trends and how they're changing today. But, uh, you know, we've got a, a, a debt ceiling issue uh, that's now come up again. I think that's a significant surprise to most today. And uh, I don't know, maybe that's even one of those big surprises, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, 2008 was the, uh, the no income, no job uh, uh, mortgages in 2001, it was, uh, you know, over evaluating technology and uh, not having the right diversification. Maybe we're sitting here in 2023, 24. Perhaps what we uh, we come to find out is that, you know, this deficit spending uh, that we're doing and uh, the Fed not even, you know, commenting about it to Congress, which in my opinion is negligence because it is their job to tell the Congress, hey, your spending is is counterintuitive to the interest rate raises and everything else that we're trying to do right now. But, you know, the Fed uh, hasn't hasn't commented on that. They've said that they want to be politically neutral. And uh, and I think that that's actually not their job. They're actually supposed to be communicating uh, with Congress with what's happening. So uh, it's a mess. Uh, I don't know how we can look out even into the long run and say, man, I'm excited about, you know, where this thing's headed. To me, we could be setting ourselves up for another lost decade. Okay, so you've made the, the bear case. You've made the case for all the headwinds in the market right now. Certainly didn't make the case for dividend paying stocks and fixed income, which is what our last guest uh, preferred. So what are you doing with your money right now? Are you keeping it in cash? What would you buy at this point? Okay, so we've got valuations that are just real frothy right now. So in my opinion, hard assets and commodities are gonna outperform the crowded tech uh, trades that a lot of people are doing right now. And, you know, by the way, I have portfolios that are literally geared towards that, and they've been doing exceptional. So we've got about 30 different portfolios. So we're not just in one thing or another. Um, I personally think that, that we're going to need to be just more dynamic uh, as we head into the future. I believe in hedging strategies as a real part of uh, a, a planning process to understand, you know, that money's made kind of like a, an, an escalator, but it can be lost like an elevator. We got we to gotta have some things in place here. So where are we putting assets today? You know, I think Exxon's got, uh, you know, a great story to be able to share. But more importantly, I just believe in U.S. oil. Uh, U.S. oil is going to become more important as these BRICS uh, nations have gathered together. And the other two major oil producers, of course, are Russia and Saudi Arabia. And now they're aligned uh, in uh, this, this, this oil trade, and they're just in lockstep, uh, even with stuff that they've done uh, here prior. You know, uranium and copper are metals that we're going to need for the next 15 to 20 years if we're going to be, you know, looking at uh, uh, EVs and more of this green new uh, technology. Uh, but, you know, we've been strategically outflanked right now on metals as, as China ch is, is literally controlling uh, most of those. Um, one other point here is, is miners. You know, they've not performed nearly as well year to date. So look at their P.E. ratios. They're, they're, they're trading at a steep discount to gold, uh, but they're, they're very profitable today, given the fact that they just need twelve hundred dollars uh, an ounce in order to be able to profitably mine. So at nineteen fifty or so, they're doing pretty good. Um, so with the miners, you could either go into individual names, which could be a good way to make a whole bunch of money quick or lose a whole bunch of money quick. Uh, the other part to that would be GDX. 
Uh, and so this is just the, the biggest, broadest uh, metal miners group. Um, and I would just say, you know, if we can leverage someone else's expertise in that space, maybe that's a safer way to get involved with something that, uh, you know, is, is a little bit more challenging to understand. But it's at about 27 right now today. And, um, you know, I think it's probably going up to 50 uh, here very soon, especially with the U.S. dollar uh, likely weakening, uh, given some of the challenges that we're seeing here with this October shutdown and, uh, you know, likely uh, downgrade from Moody's coming. Uh, as they just are giving some headlines on that here recently. All right. Well, it shouldn't be a huge surprise that you're going defensive. You've certainly made the case for it. David Strzeski, Sound Planning Group. Thanks so much. Always a pleasure, even if it, even if it, it is Caroline. downbeat. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good one.